Rheumatic hernia after cardiac transplant and LVAD explantation to be presented by Dr. Philip Bow from Stony Brook University Medical Center. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for attending this session. Uh, this is a narrated video. Uh, can we just pause it one sec? Um, it's a narrated video, so I'll just preface it by saying that uh, this is more of a case report than any, uh, or uh, interesting case more than any uh, technical tour de force. Um, we just started an LVAD program at my institution. We don't actually do transplants, uh, but I'd be interested at the end of anybody else's experience, especially with fixing these Let's large defects. Move ahead. Can we play the uh, video? We present the case of a 57-year-old man with a history of idiopathic cardiomyopathy. He required support with a left ventricular assist device, but was able to undergo orthotopic heart transplantation. However, approximately one year later, he presented with prandial epigastric pain and weight loss. Diagnostic workup identified a diaphragmatic hernia with associated organoaxial gastric volvulus. This hernia is reported at a rate of approximately 5 to 15 percent after LVAD explantation, secondary to the device's preperitoneal placement and transdiaphragmatic passage of the flow cannulas. The patient was offered a laparoscopic repair to reduce the volvulus and correct the defect. Ultimately, five ports were required as shown. He was positioned supine with the surgeon standing between the legs. After initial camera access at the umbilicus, omento adhesions were first taken down. A bipolar electrosurgical device can achieve this rapidly and safely. The left upper quadrant is then exposed with the large diaphragm defect and the herniated stomach. The gastric body and fundus were flipped anteriorly into the defect. The stomach was first mobilized by opening the gastrocolic ligament and entering the lesser sac. Likewise, the short gastric vessels are taken to free the fundus. Working circumferentially, the stomach is gradually reduced. Obviously, care must be taken along the transplant heart border, and no true hernia sac can be safely excised. The remaining edges of the hernia defect are defined, including mobilization of the left lateral section of the liver. The GE junction was also visualized and appeared in normal position with no evidence of hiatal defect. It was decided to close the hernia using a biologic mesh. The defect was measured and the mesh cut to size. It was then rolled and passed through the 12 millimeter port. The posterior aspect of the mesh was secured using a running silk suture.
and the anterior edge was first brought up using interrupted stitches with the aid of a suture passer followed by absorbable tacks between the gaps. To limit any possibility of contamination, no further gastrostomy tube or gastropexy was performed. The patient recovered nicely from his procedure, and in short-term follow-up, he has had no significant uh, dysphagia, reflux, pain, or cardiac problems. In summary, upwards of 1,000 LVADs are placed annually in the U.S., many serving as a bridge to transplantation. Diaphragmatic hernia is a specific potential complication after LVAD explantation, and clinicians should have a low suspicion for its presence. Timely referral for elective laparoscopic repair is appropriate and the procedure can be performed safely. Well, thank you very much. I thought that was a fantastic video, a really large defect. So we have time for just one quick question. A uh, very nice video, although I think you're going to have to schedule your second procedure. <laughs> I'm sure you've already been critiqued for your choice of prosthesis here. I mean, there's nothing magic about the diaphragmatic location for a biologic bridge. I mean, that's going to be an expensive diaphragmatic hernia. Sir, uh, uh, our, our thoracic surgery brethren have also switched from using silk on the diaphragm because of long-term failure and using things like proline or, or Dacron. Yeah. So, uh, point very well taken. Um, I think the goal for this was to get him eating, gaining weight a little further out from his transplant. He was only a year, still on pretty decent immunosuppressives. Um, and we'll have to come back and probably fight another day, I agree.